Bokitov Khabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Seems that North Korea just does not leave the world stage at uh, troubling President Trump. And yet again, as we reported the other day, launched an ICBM. Now, there was some debate on that at the beginning, Russia saying that it was not an ICBM. But according to North Korean news, they have reported that it was indeed an intercontinental ballistic missile that they were test firing and that they were successful. And in fact, the emboldenedness of Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader, uh, also has said in the article here titled on RT, North Korea promises more gift packages for the Yankees after its first ICBM test. Talking about giving him both small and big packages and wishing America a happy 4th of July as they sent their ICBM as a gift, so to speak, uh, showing that they are very capable of attacking the U.S. mainland. Also, after that, we find out, too, that uh, South Korea with the United States was doing joint drills in response to North Korea's latest ICBM uh, threat there. They were doing uh, missile drills uh, the very following day, showing that they do have the ability to knock these missiles out of the air. Uh, and then also in an article entitled from the New York Times, What Can Trump Do About North Korea? His options are few and risky. He has called, by the way, a meeting with the United Nations uh, Security Council trying to determine what should be done. But in the article here, it says, When President-elect Donald J. Trump said on Twitter in early January that a North Korean test of intercontinental ballistic missile capable of reaching the United States won't happen, there were two things he still did not fully appreciate. How close Kim Jong-un, the North Korea leader, was to reaching that goal and how limited any president's options were to stop him. The ensuing six months have been a brutal education for President Trump with North Korea's launch on Tuesday of what administration confirmed was an intercontinental ballistic missile. The country has a new reach. Experts said the North Korean had crossed a threshold, if just barely, while a missile that could potentially strike Alaska. Mr. Kim's repeated missile tests show that there are more definitive demonstrations than he can reach uh, the American mainland cannot be far away. And of course, as we know, Kim Jong-un also shares this technology with Iran. Well, whether or not it's with a price or not, I don't know, but they seem to uh, very much like any nation that's not in cooperation, uh, that is certainly against the United States, uh, and that technology would and could very easily fall into the hands of uh, Iran. Of course, not to say that Iran doesn't already have the capabilities of reaching Israel, but uh, they don't have the capabilities of reaching the mainland United States as of yet. So there is some major concern regarding those issues as well. Uh, but in other uh, news issues that are going on in Syria, this came out the other day, and I actually briefly mentioned this. I wanted to go a little bit deeper in it. This is on neonnetal.com. Exposed U.S. Army quietly sneaks ISIS terrorists, terrorists out of Syria. But the question is, is where are they going? A senior uh, Syrian legislator, um, uh, Amnar al-Assad, expressed uh, to the U.S. that uh, expressed that the U.S. was doing this exact thing. Uh, said, according to here, he claimed that the United States Army is helping ISIS terrorists escape Raqqa following the defeated defeat by Russian and Syrian forces. The U.S. aircraft was allegedly caught by authorities in Syria who witnessed the aircraft transporting the terrorists to a location not yet known. ISIS has uh, started withdrawing troops from the west of Raqqa province following an agreement with the U.S.-backed Kurdish forces. The Syrian troops managed to remove ISIS grip in eastern Aleppo uh, and entered western part of the group's de facto capital. And of course, as you can see, some of the photos here, whether or not these are actual photos of this incident or not, cannot say, but uh, they are definitely uh, suggesting that the U.S. is moving those ISIS members out of there. And of course, we have RT speaking in another article here that just uh, that, that came out on June 19th, U.S. becoming the de facto defense shield of Islamic State in Syria, although it is a couple of, uh, almost two weeks old now. But again, it's just more of information out there, and there is an overwhelming amount of information out there 
that it seems that the U.S. continually seems to protect ISIS militants. Whether or not it's all the ISIS militants or not, can't really say. Seems like every time they get kind of caught with their hand in the cookie jar, the U.S. once again begins to lob attacks on ISIS and, and publicizes that to the world to make it look like that they're not supporting ISIS. Well, maybe it depends on which ground, which fighting unit is on the ground. Can't really say. Turkey also stepping up to the plate, claiming that they're going to begin to build aircraft carriers of their own. Don't know where he'll get the money to do that, but Erdogan is saying that uh, his country is committed to building uh, aircraft carriers. The Turkish president has said Recep Tayyip Erdogan added that Ankara is seeking self-sufficiency in its defense industry and will not allow anyone to block its military initiatives. We will build our own aircraft carriers, Erdogan said at a launching ceremony on the new Turkish uh, Kanaliada Corvette, a Istanbul Navy shipyard, which Corvette, of course, is more like a destroyer, not an aircraft carrier. But uh, very interesting to see whether or not they have that kind of capability. We know that China has uh, built its own aircraft carrier with two already in the works coming out. <clears throat> it looks like that China certainly will become a new world order superpower. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and more to come later.